Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. I remember as a little kid playing in the cold ocean of Santa Cruz, California, my mom would say, you got to come in and you got to get under a towel and get warm until your lips turn from purple to at least blue before you could go back in. And I would play in the waves and I had fun with the waves. I got older, I considered the, way, the surf to be fun and friendly. And uh, I began to surf on a real surfboard and ride bigger and bigger waves until one day I paddled out on a day when the boulders were banging against each other on the, on the, on the rocks at a place called Rincon, which means point in Spanish, in the coast of California. And I thought, okay, it's still, it's just waves. I can dive under it. They're going to splash on me. I'm still going to be okay. I paddled for 45 minutes and I could never get out. And then finally, I seemed to have my breakthrough. I was out beyond the breakers when the cleanup set came. And I realized I was right in the middle of the impact zone. They were going to break right on top of me. Normally, in a dangerous situation in the surf, you want to paddle out beyond the wave. That's where your safety is. It's so counterintuitive because off all your heart, you want to turn and go to the beach. But at that moment, it was going to break right on top of me. So I actually did turn my board, and it broke on top of me. And uh, I was underwater for a long time, under the foam ball, not underwater. And I was just jetting towards the beach, which was a good, I wouldn't say an eighth of a mile away, but it was a long ways away. And uh, finally, I burst out and was able to catch my breath. And I looked at the, the wall of rocks that, that, that uh, protect Highway 1 uh, from being tumbled by these big waves. And I realized I'm going to be driven right into those rocks. And so finally, I go at the right moment, I'm going to jump off my board and I'm going to try to grab onto a boulder uh, because uh, I know that if I'm going to either be crushed against that, that rock face uh, or I, I'll, I'll be able to withstand that force and I'll hold on to the boulder. But I know when the wave recedes, it's going to want to suck me right back out into the ocean and throw me on it again. And I was able to jump off, grab onto a rock, uh, kind of a little bit of seaweed on it, a little bit slippery. I, and while I was there, I held on with one hand underwater and undid the leash to my surfboard and held on to it. But I didn't want the force of the wave to pull on my surfboard so much that it would suck me off the rock too. And then finally, I, uh, I was able to uh, scramble up the so side of the cliff. I drug my surfboard up, banging it hundred, you know, on all the rocks. And there were hands up above from people that had pulled over on the side of the road because the waves are so big, they were watching them. And I made it to safety. It was at that time that I realized that the ocean was nothing to be trifled with. It was a time when I began to feel vulnerable. There's kind of a stage in your life, too, where you have to come to that same realization with God. When you're a kid, you have a sense of that God is, you know, this sweet, nice person. And there is a, there is a goodness to God. But there comes a point when you have to realize that he's dangerous. He's the God that created the universe. He created quasars. He created black holes. He created that great surf. And... He's the God got, that created you. But there is this time in life when you have to deal with God, to choose him or to reject him. It's with him that we have to do, like Jacob wrestling in the desert. There comes a time when you got to realize that he's a fearful God. It says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That child in a lot of people never grew up. There's still this sense in our society that, well, everybody gets to go to heaven unless maybe you're a Hitler. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, wide is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that walk thereon, but few that, that, that follow the narrow path to him. It's 100% where you will f uh, spend the rest of your life. But he's not like a friendly little wave uh, lapping on the shoreline. He's a, he's a rogue wave, he, and he's coming for you. There's going to come a time and, time, and for many who are listening to the show, many people listening right now will die today. That's the reality of being on a show with so many listeners. And I'm just calling you, God loves you, has a beautiful plan for your life, but it's 100% under your control whether you choose him or reject him. He said, if you're unfaithful, I'm always faithful. I'm always going to be inviting you, always going to be encouraging, always knocking on the door of your heart. But then he says, if you deny me, I will 
deny you because I cannot deny myself. So get right with God. God is a rogue wave. He's powerful. But if you're right with him, like my son Jeremiah dropping into an 85-foot wave, if you're right with God, you can ride the power of the wave of the Holy Spirit into the most adventurous life you can imagine. We have a really cool guest with us today. His name is John Sablon. John is one of those people, you know, when I go to conferences, one of the main reasons I go there is to find really interesting guests. The first person who my eyes kind of got glued to was John. I just saw this guy as being a strong man, but he had this uh, fire in his belly. I could just see this guy's got, he's on fire for the Lord. And I, and I found, eventually found a way to get to talk to John. And then I invited him to be on my show. We didn't really didn't get to talk much at the conference, so I'm so, so excited to hear all about you. John Sablon is here. He's from Guam. His ministry is Word Ablaze. He currently resides in, I forget the town you're in, Modesto. John, welcome to our show. Aloha, brother. <laughs> I'm really glad you're here. Uh, I, I really meant that. Uh, uh, that I had really wanted to get to know you better when, when I was at that conference. So I'm really glad that you're with us. Uh, give us a little bit of your backstory. I was talking about that rogue wave. You're from oh, yeah. Guam. People that live on islands, like I live in Hawaii, uh, and my son, by the way, he's been there. His ship pulled into port there, his, his, uh, the Bonhomme Richard uh, aircraft carrier, uh, the same one who rode those big waves, by the way. But he, uh, when you live on an island, you're more a people of the water than you are of the land sometimes. And you used to think that the water was a playful place to go. You had an experience in, in, you had an experience with the ocean. Tell us about that. I did. Now, so truth be told, I, I was born on the island of Guam, and I left when I was three. So I was raised much of my adolescence in the Bay Area, Northern California. Yeah, yeah I, I know so that area fun, very well. Yes, it's funny you bring up Santa Cruz and your story. So, um, yeah, my encounter with water has been uh, that kind of that love hate relationship because I am from the islands, right? I'm, I'm a I'm, a, I'm an islander, Pacific Islander. But I had this one particular moment um, in my uh, high school years, junior year in high school. And we were out. Uh, actually, it was, a, it was a class study session for an AP exam. So uh, anyways, we, we had a class that, that ended up going out to kind of do a last round of studying, but also have some recreation time. And it was the second day of the, uh, that, that weekend where uh, you know, a friend of mine said, hey, John, let's go boogie boarding. And, and where and was this? Where was this? This was in the Santa Cruz Aptos area. Oh yeah, Aptos. So, I went to Aptos yeah. High School, dude. Yeah, so there you go. So I'm, I'm in I'm in the I think it was Pajaro Dunes. Is that Oh, is that the yes, I remember those. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so I used I'm to in, run I'm down in. those dunes, but that's beach breaky stuff there. I I I was telling my wife yesterday, when I was a kid, I'd tell my parents, "Let's go to the beach, let's go to the beach." And they go, "We'll go to the d the dunes." And I go, "No. I don't like the waves there. They're sketchy." <laughs> Yeah, okay. So that's so where you I went. Am, here I am, ignorant of all of that. And one of one of my uh, classmates, my peers, said, "Hey, John, do you want to go boogie boarding?" And I'm like, "I don't even know what that is, right?" I'm like, "What do you?" Because I, I grew up kind of kind of hood, kind of ghetto, so I'm thinking boogie, right? But let's boogie, yeah, right? Let's and, boogie. Uh, yeah, let's boogie. Yeah, let's boogie. And he was like, "No, it's like it's like surfing, only it isn't." And I'm like, "I'm confused." And then he said he said these words to me, "What are you scared?" And immediately, <laughs> I'm like looking around at who's looking at me and my Hold response. Hold my I'm beer like, and watch this. That's right. Exactly. I'm like, I'm not scared. Give me that boogie board. You know, so we end up marching out to, uh, to, to Did the Did you have fins on? Fins on? or not, not So nothing fin. to propel you, just your legs not, and the wave. Just okay. my legs and, and me not wanting to look like some chump out there to everybody else. And so in, in the reality, I'm petrified, right? I'm marching out to the water. We, uh, we, 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 we kind of do our thing. I'm just following him. I'm like swimming, pretending like I can. Really, I'm not a good swimmer, which is sad for a Pacific Islander. It is what it is, right? Because the last time, Bear, the last time I had been in the water was when my dad threw me in the pool to teach me how to swim, right? So right. I, th there was a very much a, a fear of, of, as you were talking about, that, that yeah. the water element. But so here we are. We, we, we're, we're out there. We get, and so we get beyond the buoys and we look up and, you know, and my friend's like, hey, I, I, I think we went too far. And I'm like, you think? <laughs> so he's like, let's head, let, let's head back. So we start swimming back, and we're we're tr we're trying to swim back, and, and we're only going further out. Oh my and, gosh! And, yeah, yeah. I know. We that look feeling. up. Yeah, you know that feeling, right? I mean, you know more than I do, and 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 it's like we got caught in this riptide, and we kept swimming what seemed like you know hours, but it's just minutes, and just kept going further, further back. And it was at the, at some point where we said, all right, we need to call for help. So we're like balancing on these boogie boards. We're calling for help, you know, waving Everyone our hands. Everyone just and, thinks you're waving at them, right? Exactly. Yeah, everybody <laughs> thinks they're playing like, wow, they're kind of far. But those, those you know, they're, they're having fun out there. Look at those kids. That's awesome. So we're freaking out. And, and then 
this crazy thing happened where my friend ends up getting out of out of the riptide and mm-hmm. says, hey, I'll go get help, throws me his boogie board, and he starts swimming back to the shore like he's Michael Phelps. So I've got, here's a guy. And with two boogie the, boards don't help you. Now he's just cumbersome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So here I am with two boogie boards trying to balance myself. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to die. There's, there's no way. So I did the only thing that I could think of at that moment. I said, well, I'm going to pray me a Hail Mary. And so, really? I, I, yeah, I, I, and that's, and for not being at that point, I'm not very religious at all. And I'm you get religious in the ocean, don't you? Yeah, you get really religious when you're about to die. I'm thinking I'm 16 years old. I'm about to die, right? So I pray a Hail Mary and, and I get hit by a wave and I feel like I'm moving closer. And I kind of like reset myself and go, I'm going to try that again. Pray another Hail Mary. Boom, a wave hits me. I move closer to the shore. I'm like, oh, I'm going to try to pray the whole rosary. Let me just go do this. And next thing you know, like I'm just overwhelmed by the water. And it brings me close enough to where a group of them could be able to come out and, and bring me back to the shore. And, of course, I kissed that sand, you know, mm-hmm. when I when I got to that ground because yeah. I was shivering like a little baby. Yeah, right. It's, it is cold and you're and you're scared to death and shivering for both reasons. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's oh, really yeah. interesting uh, in that situation, saying the Hail Mary. And uh, that was kind of like an opening for the Lord to begin to deal with you. We're talking with John Sablon. His ministry with his wife is called World Ablaze. Uh, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I, you know what? I got to thank our Patreon donors. A lot of people don't know what Patreon is, but it's a way that you can support a lot of really cool ministries. Uh, ours is ours is one of them. We think we're pretty cool. And uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. If you give at like the $20 level, you get... A uh, total and all seasons past the long ride home, season one, season two, and every new episode. As soon as we create it, before it even goes to the network, you get that. You get all of our Bear Wozniak Adventure radio shows, the video version of those, um, months before they air on EWTN. And, of course, you get the, the knowledge of knowing you're helping us uh, reach out to people. And so I want to thank some of our givers, uh, John, Joseph Gomes, Joe Gomes. Thank you, Joe. Mark Clearly, Melissa Orte, Nicholas Cuchera, Peter Morton. Rick Lentz, Stephen Bell, Stephen O'Steele, Tom Equals, Tony DeSizio, Bill Gassaway, and Zip Rezeppa. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but thank you guys so much for being Patreon donors. EW10 does not provide anything for this, for us to produce this radio show, and they provide about a third of the money we need for our TV show. So every gift you give means a lot to us. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. It's such a privilege to have the the best show that's ever been made. And the reason why it is is because we have the best guests that anybody could ever have. We have all kinds of guests. Uh, uh, We have uh, people people like Dr. Peter Kraft, you know, uh, really smart people like that. We have uh, uh, people that start radio stations. What we have is just a broad broad range of people that are saying uh, that God one day tapped them on the shoulder and said, hey, you got a minute. Next thing you know, they're involved in ministry. So we love to hear these stories of people's conversion and how the Lord propelled them into ministry. We're talking with John Sablon. He and his wife have the ministry World Ablaze, and, World Ablaze, and they're in, uh, you're in Modesto now, right? 
John? Yeah, yeah, Modesto, California, Northern California. Yeah, I was. I I spent a few years. I went to Catholic school in the Madera area. My dad was going to Fresno State to get his master's degree, so I know exactly where you are. Very close to Madera, right? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Madera is just uh, south of us, about uh, about an hour away. Yeah, so. yeah. I remember lots of grapes. <laughs> My dad would say, "That's how they make raisins," and I was like, well, "Yeah." But yeah, John, we have a lot of a lot of grapes down in this area. A lot of <laughs> ag. For sure. But John, uh, you were telling us a story about that that uh, moment, that encounter with life and death in the ocean, and it propelled you into pray, praying the uh, the rosary, and and just by simply praying the rosary, it seemed like the, the, you waves came and pushed you to the shore. Uh, what 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 was your uh, upbringing in your faith, and how did you come to a deeper walk with the Lord? Yeah, um, I was, uh, you know, at the time I was born, Guam was a very Catholic island. So, so I was actually brought into the family of God, baptized 27 days after I was physically born. So, you know, b- born and then brought into the family of God, but really stopped catechesis after second grade, seven, seven years old, which essentially was when I stopped going to parochial school. Um, and, and really that was the extent of my catechesis, my formation. And um, I, I was actually raised in a, raised by an alcoholic father. So it was raised in a very abusive home um, and raised in a, in, in a very destructive environment. So I experienced actually all forms of abuse uh, mentally, emotionally and physically, obviously at the hands of a father. But also I was sexually abused by a family member all by the age of 10 or 11. So you can imagine that my idea of God, of self, of other was completely stripped and torn away from me. Right. So I can't imagine um, that you're even here today. Yeah, it, yeah, it, absolutely. Praise God that that uh, that He has a plan, right? And He can write straight with crooked lines. But my, it was a wayward walk because at that point in my life, when when those that are supposed to love and protect you don't, um, you know, you you're, you're really at a loss in this world. And so, uh, me and my two older siblings in particular, right? We we kind of subscribe to what the world said would get rid of all that pain, right? So when you're anybody who's ever dealt with alcoholism, raised in an alcoholic environment, knows the the trauma, the tribulation, the uh, anxiety-ridden environment that you're always on eggshells. You never know what's going to happen in a given day. Um, you know, it's like a bear coming home every single day, right? That's you don't know what to expect. You don't know what to expect. So that was a lot of my upbringing, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of worry. And we honestly subscribe to the, the wayward life, to self-medication in the sense of just, you know, partying and all those things that the world says will, will, will make the pain go away. And um, at that moment that I just described to you in my junior year, what's it, it began, I think, that that wooing back. But I wish it was that monumental moment. It wasn't. But it was that that moment, that actual Christmas Eve of that same year, Bear, um, uh, my father came home drunk and had an altercation with my two older brothers and, and tried to shoot me and my two older brothers. So on Christmas Eve of my senior year in high school, I became homeless um, you know, we left. I mean, that was just it was very a, a crazy that that moment when you encounter the waves, the ocean of craziness. Right. right um, was very uh, when I reflect back, of course, right. I look back that that was really a tell of my life at that moment that I was being consumed by a water of of the world. I was being, being drowned. Oh, I was being drowned. There was no faith in my life. There's riptides. Right? There's there is, there is yep. every current pulling you away. When yeah. You say we left. Who's we and where did you go? Uh, me and my two older brothers in particular, because that's who the really? altercation was with. Yeah, so we really? left and we all, we all kind of just tried to, we were transitional homeless, trying to live with friends here and there. Um, you know, uh, just, I mean, we were running the streets. I mean, we, we really at that point had, uh, I, I was gracious or I was grateful enough and fortunate enough to where I had finally a, a friend of the family whose parents took me in for that last, wow. Man, last what a, uh, semester of my senior year. What an incredible thing. So you, the three of you, the brother. Yeah, we all. The, the, brothers yeah, took to, the yeah. brothers took together. To wow. some degree. Everybody went, kind of went their separate ways. Everyone just tried to have to survive. Yeah, because um, you can't really stick together because no one's going to take in three three boys. And you're not no, boys, you're, you're like young men. Exactly. You're about ready to launch, and then someone pulls, off, pulls you off the launch pad, and you're like, what am I going to do? You know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so everybody, my two older brothers were already adult males. You know, um, by, by that time, they were, they were grown men, but it was just everybody was just trying to fend for themselves. So it was you not not a lot of faith at all, not a lot of faith at all um, outside of the cultural Catholicism that probably most people can experience. You know, I, um, we my mom was a very religious woman. I'll give you that, and she she just lost the battle with a with a husband who wasn't who wasn't um, faithful in that in that sense. As, did as did you see God. her praying the rosary? 
Oh, yeah. She led a lot of the rosaries. Um, so uh, that was very a cultural thing. The rosary was a big deal in the in a Guamanian household. Um, it's how you do novenas when, you know, when somebody dies. I mean, that's how you're introduced to a lot of the faith is. And that's you know, why you prayed the rosary. Yeah, so that was mom. that was. That's Brandon. right. Mom, mama would lead the rosary actually in Guam. No actually. kidding. That, in Guam, 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 can you in say? Guam, do you remember? English. Can you say? I it? do not. I do not because they didn't mm -hmm. teach us the language. They didn't want us to struggle in, in school for whatever reason. But I'm like, that's the best time to learn another language is when you're young. Yeah. But she would lead uh, the the rosary in half English, half half Guamanian. Tomorrow is the, na the native term, but half Guamanian and half English. Um, she would lead the rosary. Wow, how beautiful! And so. So then you, you're 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 out on the streets. A out family the takes you in, how, and, and then how did you make how did you make your transition from there into your adult life? Yeah, um, actually, out of high school, I was actually um, I was nominated and accepted to West Point Military Academy. Um, no, you weren't. I, yes, yes, I was. There. That's absolutely amazing. That in spite of all of that. Yeah, in the midst of the darkness. So the thing about it, where most people saw the outside looking in, I was president of the school, captain of the football team, valedictorian, cleaned house at senior awards night. And in the midst of all of that, it was dark and crazy in my own life, uh, oh my you know, God. behind those doors. So I, I actually got accepted. I, I didn't think I was going to get accepted because you got to be nominated by it's you tough, know, vice, a congressman yeah, or something, congressman, like senator or a vice president of the United States of America. And so. I actually got nominated. I'm thinking I'm going to go to engineering school, go to Cal Poly, go to Santa Clara, go to UC Irvine. You wouldn't, well, go, to the, you wouldn't go to the hippie school at University of Santa Cruz. No, no, absolutely <laughs> not. Well, actually, at that point, I probably would have. I would have been totally fine going to the hippie school um, because of where my life was. But um, uh, truth be told, I didn't think I was going to get accepted. And when I did, I, I felt like I had to accept. So um, I went to West Point and left in a couple of months after, after Beast Barracks and came back and then tried to figure life out and reapply to school and everything else. And so, uh, you know, I met my wife, thanks be to God, in high school. And so we were still uh, dating and-, and What's and her name, her first name? Nicole. Nicole, and, okay. um, and thanks be to God, I came back and we ended up getting married uh, out of high school. So once I got back from West Point, um, we ended up getting married and here we have two, two uh, kids, broken kids at that, because she's got a pretty difficult uh, uh, upbringing as well. But so she, both um, of you, both of you come from a difficult situation. Oh yeah, which is a recipe for disaster in a marriage. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's uh, I always tell people it was it was a uh, uh, marriage made made in hell, right? Mar or match yeah. made in hell, right? Wow. right? Match made in wow. hell. And I said because of the circumstance, because you but have two people who are broken who don't understand what love is, relationship, God. She she didn't grow up with any faith background at all, and then you put two people together who are really just kids, right? right? I mean, Think about emotional and spiritual immaturity mm -hmm. to, to now you have to try to live life together. Um, but but the Lord has definitely used uh, my wife as that wooing of me back to him because it was through her own desire for God and found that in in the Catholic Church that brought me back into Holy Mother Church. And um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot there. There we probably would be talking for several hours. Oh yeah, hours. I, I could spend a lot of time talking to you about that. I just, just the fact that you're still alive after going through what you went through, and then to hear you say that you, you excelled. You, 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 it was kind of a way of turning your back on what was happening, and you just focused on that one thing. A lot of times when you have <clears throat> pain in your life, you turn and you just, you just focus on one thing. There's things that you can control, things that you can't control, and the things that you could control: your studies and your athleticism, things like that. And th by applying fortitude. Uh, you, it somehow pulled you through that time and then finding each other. We're like hanging on to a buoy or to those two boogie boards out there, right? H helping each other. <clears throat> but eventually uh, you found, you found a path toward, towards wholeness. And we're going to talk more about that when we get back. But <clears throat> the name of your ministry is world, world ablaze. Yes. Where can, is, where can they find you? So they can, there's two places they can go to world ablaze. So like the world and then ablaze.org. Um, so dot org it is a, is a nonprofit uh, uh, apostolate um, or you can even just go to my own website johnsablon.com so either one of those will get you to the same place um, johnsablon.com or worldablaze.org and how do you spell sablon s a b as in boy l a n as in nancy yeah i love this guy and there's some of you that may find yourself in the very same you're wondering this guy's been reading my mail man i've i went through so much of the same thing <laughs> He can throw you a boogie board. You should you should reach out to him. Uh, go to his website, reach out to him, and and uh, let him be kind of a, a mentor to you and help you get you on the right path. Uh, and point you to other people in your area that maybe can help you too. We're both part of something called the Catholic Men's Leadership Alliance. 
which is ministry to men from all over the world, really. And so we have this network of, of, of men that want to challenge and equip and, and uh, inspire other men to, to godliness and to greatness. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My producer, I should say my son, Shane Wozniak, uh, he, he is the guy, by the way, uh, he and my other son, Josh, are the, are the men behind the Long Ride Home TV show. When Shane was a young man, uh, I remember that he came to me once and said, hey, Dad, can I borrow your brand new VCR camera? <laughs> and I thought, he, he was the most destructive human being I, I'd ever met in my life. He, he didn't mean to be either. He's just this powerful kid. Uh, he would. We couldn't contain him in his crib. Let's put it that way. Even when he was little, and uh, he would. I don't know. He just had this ability to break things. He didn't mean to. He wasn't a bad kid at all. And so when he said, "Dad, can I borrow your brand new camera?" I thought, "No." And I normally want to say yes to my kids, but I said no. And I turned my back, and it was like as if the Lord just put me on a swivel. And it was as clear as not like I heard it. Actually, heard it out loud, but it was like the Lord saying, "Don't." Bought, loan him the camera, give it to him. And I gave it to him. And uh, it's because of that little bit of obedience and the inspiration and the desire of my son, Shane, that we have long ride home television, that we did tons of surfing videos together. We had an ocean retreat show that was also aired on EW10 Network. It's because of him that this is all out, him and my other son, Joshua, too, who's more of the tech guy that our TV show is seen on the Armed Forces Network all over the world and uh, available to you uh, by becoming a Patreon donor. You can get all of the, all of the episodes. But it's, it's really people come up to him and go, so what it's like, uh, aren't you lucky that you get to be involved in, a, in, a, in working in a ministry that your dad does? And it's actually kind of quite the opposite, everyone. It's because Shane came to me with a vision and said, Dad, you should do a podcast. Well, what's that? This was probably 12 years ago, and we did our first surfing podcast, and he said, we should do it on video. We should stream it. We should get it on YouTube. Why don't we do a TV show together? And so it was really at his inspiration, and the genius that you see behind you know, anything you like about Long Ride Home, uh, he, his whole life is consumed uh, with the cinematic quality of that and also um, bringing us to a point of excellence. We know Long Ride Home, the first thing we try to do with our TV and our radio shows is entertain people enough to grab their attention and hold their attention long enough so we can communicate the gospel. So a shout out to my, my son, Shane Wozniak. But I was, as I was saying, the producer of the show, Shane, is telling me I got to remind you guys to go to my website, my website and sign up for our, for our email newsletter. It's a big deal. You go to our email newsletter, you get a lot of free stuff. You get, you get this, the radio show, the video version of the radio show before it airs. Uh, a couple of days before it airs, you also get um, all kinds of other video content. People are kind of tired of reading, but you get we, we do so much great video stuff. You get free video content, and you get up to date on what we're up to. So go to what, deepadventure.com, sign up for our newsletter, man. We'd love, we'd love to have you be part of the pack. We're talking with John Sablon. He, is, uh, he and his wife, what is your wife's name again, John? Nicole. Oh, I, that's what I thought I was going to say. It. <laughs> Nicole and John have a beautiful ministry, World Ablaze. And we're talking about how God brought someone who went through basically hell as a, as a kid and his wife did too, became high school sweethearts, were married, and somehow in, in spite of all of that, um, they held on to each other. And it's because of Nicole, she started challenging you to go to get more involved in the church and the mass. So, so then what happened? She said, let's go to church or what happened? You know, it's funny. We, were, we had overcame so much as far as from a worldly perspective, right? We both um, were first generation college students. Um, we, you know, she went on to graduate school. I went on to graduate school. You know, we, we, we got the, the dream house, the dream cars. Um, we had three beautiful children. Thanks be to God. And, and, and one she, that wasn't or? or... Uh, was that? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> there is those three beautiful children and that other guy. And one, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then there's all that of one them are beautiful. Just, all three of them absolutely, are beautiful. Okay, they're all children it. of God. No, okay. we have three beautiful children. All okay. three of them. That's all we have. Um, 
And um, it was at one point where she says, you know, we're missing something. We need to go back. We need to go back to church. And so wow. she was very comfortable with uh, or what she knew was at best a Protestant experience. And so we just kind of church top around church top around in the local area to different Protestant churches. I never felt comfortable there. I've always identified as Catholic, but of I course understand I was being, that feeling. I was yeah. I was being a spiritual sloth, right? I mean, I was being indifferent and completely. You weren't being led. You were, to, yeah. You weren't being the, yeah. uh, the the head of the household spiritually anyway. No, I wasn't being yeah. the priest of my home. I was. I was. I had at that point uh, maybe whether it was consciously, uh, uh, subconsciously abdicated my responsibilities as the head of the home. So we kind of bounced around, and then we ended up at the, our current parish, St. Joseph's Parish in Modesto. And she said, oh, God is here. And she was, it was through the, through the Adoration Tabernacle. And so then we started that. Wait a path. minute. So what do you mean? You went to, what caused you to go to Adoration? Well, it, it, was, it was first in the tab, just the presence of God in the Tabernacle, right? Mm-hmm. So when you leave a, a, a church door open and allow people to come and sit in the presence of our Lord in, in, in the Blessed Sacrament of the altar, um, whether it be exposed or, or just reposed in the Tabernacle, the Lord does some amazing things, right? So it spoke to my wife's heart, like, "Oh, God is here." You this know, I gotta, I, let me tell you something, man. My, my mom was in a, raised in a very uh, her her mother died when in childbirth when she was young. Her father had left long ago and had um, married five or six times before her mom actually died, uh, and she was pretty much alone in the world. You know, as a, maybe at ten years old, eleven years old she would find herself going into the Catholic Church, even though she was raised Lutheran. Eventually, she got kicked out of her kind of uh, adopted home because she was becoming Catholic in, the, in high school. But, but she said there was something about going into that church. She didn't know it was the Eucharist. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jesus we would know present. as faithful Catholic. That's what the draw is because it's yeah. our Lord himself. But there has to be something different, right? That's a whole other yeah. subject we can get into. But <laughs> at the minute, the minute that two things look the same, one is unnecessary. So we have to, as faithful, present God as God, right? It's something that elevates our mind to something that is beyond this world. So mm. she found, she was called and felt like this is where we need to be. That fit with, with me, of course, being a, a cultural Catholic at best. And mm-hmm. so we started that pathway back. She ended up getting into RCIA. I ended up getting into uh, confirm. I never got confirmed, so I got into adult confirmation classes. We and then we started to get all the sacraments right. Right. So it was like, mm-hmm. okay, boom. She got brought in. Kids started getting baptized. I got my confirmation. We got our marriage convalidated. Wait, how long ago was this? Um, she got brought into the church in 2004. I got, yeah. I received adult confirmation at in 2005, and then wow. we, so all during that right during that time frame is when. You know, marriage got convalidated. You know, kids were getting mm-hmm. their uh, their sacraments right, um, and then that's when, obviously, through sanctifying grace and, and the grace of God working through the sacraments, and then we started getting propelled into the con- really those multiple conversion moments. Well, the thing about the rosary again, going back to that moment on the boogie board, mm-hmm. when you were you you were basically in a life or death situation, and you began to pray the rosary, and suddenly waves you drifted into the impact zone. I don't know what, but waves started to come. And, and eventually you drove you to shore. Uh, is, is, so there's, there's something special about the rosary in your life. And then as your journey continues, you eventually become a Dominican, a third order Dominican. I'm, a, I'm an oblate, a Benedictine oblate, by the way. So oh. something similar. But, you know, the Dominicans and, the, and the, the rosary, you know, go hand in hand. So how did that happen? Yeah, you know, I think our Blessed Mother has always had her hand on both of us. Um, that she is absolutely... Um, it, uh, instrumental in our life. So it, we actually fell upon the Dominican order. It was literally at a Saturday morning mass. We decided to get up and go to the daily mass that morning. And then we fell upon the lay Dominican chapter that was there uh, doing their professions. They were doing temporary professions and life professions. And so, and you had to, uh, a Dominican friar there. And this is at our own local parish. And we're like, what is that? And so they said, oh, you know, come and see, come check it out. And then we went to go visit this chapter that was, a, that was an official chapter at our, at our parish. And then they started talking about the spirituality of St. Dominic and, you know, primary charisms, preaching, primary purpose of salvation of souls. And my wife and I are looking at each other like, oh, yeah, this is this is absolutely the place for us because we we felt drawn to the charisms. Now, here's the here's how, you know, God works, brother. <laughs> Unbeknownst to us, we were married on the feast day of St. Captain of Siena, a third order Dominican. Wow. We were married on April 29th. She is the patroness. Right of all third order Dominicans. Oh my goodness! And, and and this is looking back, we weren't even married in the Catholic Church because I wasn't practicing my faith. We were married outside of that. So April 29th 
became it, I mean, it just blew our minds like, oh, here we are thinking that we chose the late Dominicans. And no, the right. Dominicans chose us, our Lord, our lady, St. Dominic, obviously St. Saint, Saint Catherine of Siena have been on us, praying for us um, um, to, to, be, to come back to our Lord and to the church via that route. So all of this, you know, it's always hindsight's 2020, right? You look back and you're like, oh, wow, God's hand has been with us ever since. You, I bet you when I, we finally meet our guardian angels, mm. Brother Bear, they're yeah, gonna be like, be man, cool. hey, yeah, you're yeah. like, dude, you had me working overtime, right? Yeah, I, I think mean, so. Um, I think so. Both of us. We're talking yeah. with John Sablon. He his ministry with his wife is called World Ablaze. How could they find you again? Before we come, we're gonna come back. One, we get you get we get you for one more segment. But yeah, how can John, they find you? Yeah, johnsablon.com, S A B L A N, all one word or world like the world Earth, um, World Ablaze, A B L A Z E dot org. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to let everybody know every year we do an annual cruise uh, retreat out of the Port Canaveral Cocoa Beach area. We start out with the luau the night before for all of those who are involved in our ministry. And then we go out for four nights and, uh, and we um, have mass every day. We have confessions and we basically we study the virtues together. But we also have a time of just getting to know each other. It's just a great time for a lot. my ministry is so much directed towards men. Uh, but men and women and their families all come. Grandparents bring grandkids and stuff like that. So it's just a great time together. We remind, want to remind you of that. And I also want to, want to remind you, the catechism is such an important weapon in our life. That's what the Catholic Church calls it. That every morning at 7 a.m. bear time, wherever I happen to be in the world, at 7 a.m. my time, I flip on Facebook Live on my fan page, Deep Adventure, Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure fan page, not my personal page because it's it's maxed out. And I... And I um, I teach on, uh, we teach the catechism. We go line by line by line. We've gone all the way through the catechism once over a three-year period. We're starting again. And it's just so cool because with Facebook Live, other people participate. As I'm talking, they might be texting me and I can respond to you. Plus, they text each other on that Facebook Live stream. And it kind of builds a little mini kind of community there. People pray for each other and and uh, and it's just, it's just a great fellowship. So I encourage you to go and uh, follow us on Bear Wasik Deep Adventure on Facebook. We're talking with John Sablon. Uh, I met this guy at a Catholic Men's, Men's Leadership Alliance meeting in Dallas, Texas. And I, I've, I, you know, I, I look around and I go, who can I, who can I have an interview on my radio show? And John just really stood out. And every time I wanted to go talk to him, he was talking to someone else. Finally, I was able to get, a, get connected with him. And I'm really glad that we did. Uh, John and his wife have World of Blaze um, uh, Ministries. And uh, we were just talking about how you, you had gone through incredible rough time as a child, your wife too. Uh, you guys uh, married and, and both with, with advanced degrees and three beautiful children and beautiful car and beautiful home, but felt emptiness until you finally found the Eucharist and returned to the church and became third order Dominicans. Mm -hmm. uh, but, then you, but then it was like, okay, John, I did that for you. Now you do something for me. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and yeah. so the, you begin to see a need uh, in men men's lives around you. Tell us about that. Yeah, I think that you know the biggest thing that I had to face really was my own father wound um, and and my own uh, issues that had resulted from failed male leadership in my life. Mm. Right. So not just my father, and I don't want to demonize my father. It is what it is. But um, th there's a there was absolutely one hundred percent an issue with. Um, the male presence in my upbringing and with a lot of, uh, unfortunately, right. You have like, what close to 40% of children being born into fatherless homes today. Um, we've got issues today with just even our own, our spiritual fathers. I mean, father, the X factor 100% is, is the, uh, the, the men, the role that men play or don't play in, um, in the lives of the church and the lives of their families. And so, um, it was actually at the nudging of my wife. God, you know, God bless my wife, right? She was just like, "Hey, you got to go and you know do something over here. Um, take the take what God is giving you, those gifts, those graces, and um, and start speaking to the to the hearts of men." And so that's actually how World of Blaze started. Was 
um, was really start. We started with men's conference. So we're, we we started with the men's conference and we're up to our fourth one. This uh, actually having it in a couple weeks from now with uh, Doug Berry, myself and Jesse Doug Romero. Berry, that rookie. Doug, yeah, that rookie. That yeah, those two <laughs> those two uh, soft guys. Jesse Who else? And, Doug uh, Berry and Jesse is coming. Jesse Romero. Yeah, yeah those two those two rookies. Oh my god! And yeah. the same. Yeah, actually, Jesse right at this moment is at my home in Waikiki. Oh, that's awesome! Isn't that cool? Yeah, that is. He's cool. there for he's there for about. I wish I was there, but. He, he gets to be there. And Doug Berry, I just was on his podcast. I forget the name of I saw that. the one he does with yeah. Father Heilman. The Grace Force, right? US the Grace Force, Force podcast, yeah. 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 I guess, okay. So you get a couple of rookies to come out and talk to A couple of rookies to come out. So we're up to our fourth one. We already have our fifth one planned. And then, so we started with that, with the men's conference, and then it grew into... When, when is it? When is it? Where is it? No, November 23rd, and it's at Holy Family Parish in Modesto. Um, and it's uh, an all-day Saturday. All the sacraments will be present. Uh, sacrament of Confession... Eucharistic Holy Hour, the Mass, and then, of course, inspiring talks by uh, Jesse, Doug, and yours truly. So hey, and I a, want you to invite me to come out there and speak. You, you got it, brother. You got we're, it. We're got to make me, I would love to come out there and speak. And I, got, I go go by the old Piggly Wiggly stories. There still exist out there in Madeira. <laughs> in uh, Madeira, we'll have to go find That's out. That's all but. of a sudden that memory comes out from my six my six <laughs> six year old brain. That was, but yeah, I would love to come out and do that with you, man. It would be so cool. But so anyway, so. This conference, is it at St. Joseph's or where? No, it's actually going to be at Holy Family Parish in Modesto. So we kind of, uh, we take our apostle. We're not tied to a specific parish. We try to, ro- we kind of go up and down our diocese and try to serve the diocese as a whole at different parish wow. hosts. great idea. Um, yeah, so we, and really that's, uh, it was really, that's where it was born. I started a men's group out with another brother of mine. Actually, there's another couple that's part of World of Blaze. Um, Richard and Maria Delgado Brown, they're, they're another couple who had that same call and desire to evangelize and really help form other faithful in the faith. And so uh, we added a women's conference. We've added a family conference. We just added a vocations conference. And so we're up to like nine or we've, uh, this will be our ninth conference that we're throwing. Um, incorporated on the day of St. Catherine of Santa, the feast day, which is obviously also our, our wedding anniversary. So yeah, it was just the, you know what, once the Lord gives you uh, once you fall in love, you got to go share it with the world. And, it's and so when, true, when, man. Yeah, yeah. It's the same way you would with with your wife or your like your children, right? You want to tell everybody about the the gift of love. It, it was I fell in love with Jesus Christ. He saved. Absolutely. You didn't fall in love with doctrine, did you? No, uh, with doctrine. Well, I mean, you fell in love with the with the person of the Jesus. Person who, of Jesus Christ. But of course, first. doctrine. Jesus is the truth. So you Amen. fall in love with with truth and doctrine too. But yeah, it's not like you wife. fell. You didn't fall in love with the religion. You fall in love with Jesus, and then he reveals the beauty of, of, of his truth and the beauty of the Catholic Church and the beauty of the religion. But there is that scripture verse, those that hold to the form of religion but deny its power. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to, it, you, it's not until you light the candle that you begin to realize, oh, now there's light. Now I see why this, how does this fit, how all that stuff goes together. And you're very well spoken. I, I have to believe there's a book coming out soon or something. Wow, well, you just read my mind. There is. I'm actually in the process of finishing a uh, a book now. Um, it'll be, and it's a, more of a spiritual guide. I've got a couple of ideas in the works, but the one that'll be coming out will be called Christ-like, um, uh, a man, uh, you know, after God's own heart, and and speaks wow. to um, really kind of the spiritual journey, but just giving a framework. Right. A lot of times, you know, this bear when you when you travel, a lot of people want to know, hey, brother, how do I grow in my faith? What what tips or tricks can you give me? If I now that that desire there, that love's there, what do I got to do? And so the, this book, Christlike, will be one that is um, kind of helps people walk through the different elements. And it's actually an acronym that I use that I break down each well, letter of tell, Christ. Tell us that briefly. We've got a few more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, C is for compassion. H is for humility. R is for reconciliation. I is for interior life. S is for sacrifice. T is for trust. L is for love. I is for intentional. K is for knowledge. And E is for Eucharistic. So mm. it's going to be a, a reflection and a breakdown, just kind of some scriptural passages, some some church documents, church fathers, lives of the saints that mm. kind of bring that forward. And, and then the practicality, the flesh of the bone. John, what can I do to grow in my faith? And I'll talk to you about, all right, you need to establish an interior life, right? If you're not right on the invisible, how are you going to be right with the visible, right? So there's, mm. there's things of those things that we kind of bring to light uh, in there. And um, I've got, now that you, you, we put it out there, I've got my good brother, Deacon Harold Burks, over here, is writing the forward on that. So um, Oh, you do? He's yeah. another rookie. Another rookie. Yeah, he's another rookie who just really we can get him to be more passionate. And oh my gosh! Great, right? Yeah, I was just with him. I, I bump into him different places. Well, we were together with him at CMLA. Yeah, and then yeah. I, I was in Birmingham for the uh, radio oh, the radio conference. conference. Right? And uh, 
and we always seem to be at the same airport, the same air, airlines, the same airport lounge, you know. And uh, so he's what a gift. Yeah. Amen. What a gift Amen he is. That. Wow. Yeah. For a rookie, he's pretty good. Yeah, he's not bad, right? <laughs> we'll get him. To, we'll get him to start learning about the faith a little bit. <laughs> so if people want to, people are are interested in your area um, to come, yes. they can go to the what website? Worldablaze.org. And um, they don't have and, to wait till November. No, uh, no, we've got. Because we don't know this our, show. Well, that will already have happened after this show even airs. But you've right. got other. What are the other things that they can get involved with? Oh, they can. You know, we we tend to give. We have other conferences coming up. We have a family conference coming up in February of 2020. We've got you know the other uh, fifth annual men's conference already planned for August of 2020. Um, we're working out the details of a uh, our both our women's conference coming up in 2020, as well as the vocations conference coming up in 2020. Different retreats, different um, workshops that we're given. Uh, Doug wow. and I are actually hosting a a, a women's session uh, next week. So if you just subscribe to our newsletter and and go find us on Facebook and Instagram and all of that, you can stay plugged into uh, you know us bringing the truth, specifically the person of Jesus Christ, to you and your home somewhere. And also, I mean, maybe you're not at all close to where John is. You could probably get to know him and find out how you can do some of the things that he's doing. I have a feeling your, your ministry is very uh, charismatic and, and, and catechetical. You really have a teaching gift, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the Lord does with you with your writing. Um, and when you see Doug Barry, you can <laughs> kick him in the shin for me. <laughs> I will. <laughs> but I, I tell you, that guy, I taught him how to surf <clears throat> in Waikiki, probably one of the best first time surfers I've, I've ever seen. He really actually is quite an athlete. Well, you're going to you have know. to help me overcome my fear when, when you, when maybe me and yeah, the, we'll the, do the that. family come, come hang out with you in Hawaii. We, we could surf at Modesto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but, but I mean, he actually up. is, he actually is a good surfer. So again, where can people find you? What's your website? JohnSablon.com. If you just go there, you can get, uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to all my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Oh, so you got a YouTube channel. Cool. And yeah. it's called, what's your YouTube channel called? John Sablon. John Sablon. Make it easy. Yeah. Yeah. Go there, subscribe, ring the little bell. I, I'm supposed to remind people to do the same thing for us, too. Um, go to Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, subscribe, ring the bell, and then you get notified when you when new stuff comes out. John Sablon, thanks for being with you, uh, with us. So glad that we're able to connect. And for all those of you out there, we love you and appreciate. You have no idea how much we care about you and pray for you and, and for your salvation and for the richness uh, of your life. And as we say in Hawaii, the word aloha means to give breath. And so when I say aloha at the end of my show, I mean it in the way that Jesus did when he said, my, my, uh, my gift I give you, my gift I leave with you, and he breathed his Holy Spirit. So that till we see you guys next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! <laughs> I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.